Have you ever had your renders coming out of Blender feeling flat, under detailed or washed out? Well, trust me, I've been there too and today I'm going to show you a simple modular setup for the Blender Compositor which will allow you to greatly enhance your renders and achieve the filmic look. I will also be making a Blend file available which contains this full compositing setup on my Ko-Fi, free for all members. This means you can simply set this as your default or copy it to another scene. Now, let's take a look at how it works. Firstly, we are going to add some of our most transformative nodes. We have the Glare node, which we can utilize to add a nice looking bloom pass to our render. We can use Shift A to add it in here and you can basically just add the nodes the same way that the shader editor and geometry nodes work. If you don't know how those things work, you should probably figure those out first. These are the settings that I like the most with the Glare node. You can see that there are five parameters you can change here. The only one that I really fiddle with is the Mix one to determine how strong the bloom is and the Threshold which decides how bright something needs to be before there is bloom. Next is the Lens Distortion node, and we can use these subtle settings that I show here to add a light touch of chromatic aberration and distortion. But in many cases you might want to be even more subtle, and sometimes you might want to be a little bit higher, just don't overdo this one. Next up is Bokeh Blur, which we use to help soften the overly sharp and digital edges which 3D software renders. I don't really mess with these settings at all, I just leave them like this. Now here's a piece which is slightly more elaborate. If you enable the rendering of a mist pass, you can use a color ramp and mix it with the image output to get a basic fog or mist layer in your scene with minimal performance change and a lot of easy control in post. Looks pretty nice in some cases, but again I don't really tend to use it that much, I just go with actual volumetrics in my scene so I can control it in viewport. Next up is the box sharpen node with a very low setting and they'll still sort of define your edges but in a more imperfect less digital way which I like. So overall I'd say that your image sharpness is maintained throughout this whole compositing setup but it's just kind of a bit more natural looking. The exposure node can be used to change your exposure but to be honest I usually play with that outside of Blender or in the actual render settings rather than here. Finally. Film grain. You're going to want to make a new texture set to noise in this textures tab and rename it. And then you can add a texture node in the compositor and select that. If you set it to overlay over the image with a low factor number, you can animate this Z value to get random film grain on each frame of the animation. It looks quite a lot better than the noise that you get from cycles. And lastly, we have a color balance node for some nice color control. Throughout this process, we want to make sure to address the perfection and oversharpness which comes with 3D scenes. Degradation for artistic purposes is almost always a good idea in 3D renders. It just depends on the scene as to how far you go. Sometimes you are very subtle with it because you don't want to take attention away. And other times you really do want to achieve photorealism. And this is a lot of the stuff that carries your renders that extra step further. A lot of the tools that we just use, lens distortion, grain, blur, bloom, they make the image less perfect in so many ways. But that's what we want because real life is chaotic and this is closer and closer to what a real camera would be capturing. Now, Blender can still do a lot, and the composite is great if you're looking to render an animation because it will apply on every frame, but for still frames or if you want a thumbnail, please do take it into a free software like GIMP or a paid one like Photoshop, play with the curves and white balance, dust filters, vignetting, and overlaying other images more to bring it even further with even more easy control, because those pieces of software are actually made for the job, if you get what I mean. Now, thanks so much for watching. Here you can see a video where the effects of this setup are showcased, and again, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.